What if I told you that the Great Pyramid of Giza was built with such precision that we couldn't replicate it today, even with our modern technology? We're talking about 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing about 2.5 tons, stacked perfectly to create a structure that stood as the tallest building on Earth for 3,800 years. And here's the kicker. No wheels, no pulleys, no iron tools, just copper chisels and human hands. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and join our curious community. Here, we explore everything that piques your curiosity. If there's anything that puzzles you, share it with us in the comments so we can answer it in the next video. So how did they do it? That's what everyone wants to know. Because when you really look at the numbers, nothing adds up. The Great Pyramid was completed in roughly 20 years. If you do the math, that means workers had to place one block every five minutes, working 10 hours a day every single day for two decades. Think about that for a second. And we're not talking about small bricks here. We're talking about stones heavier than most cars. For years, the official story went like this. Thousands of workers, mostly farmers during the flood season, dragged these massive blocks up enormous ramps using nothing but rope, wooden sledges, and sheer determination. Sounds reasonable, right? Well, here's where it gets interesting. In 2014, a team of physicists from the University of Amsterdam discovered something fascinating. They found that ancient Egyptians likely wet the sand in front of the sledges, which reduced the friction by up to 50%. They actually tested this, and it worked. Suddenly, moving a 2.5-ton block didn't seem completely impossible. But there's a problem with the ramp theory that nobody talks about. To build a ramp that could reach the top of the Great Pyramid at a manageable angle, you'd need a ramp nearly a mile long. That's more material than the pyramid itself. And after the pyramid was done, they'd have to dismantle this massive ramp without leaving a trace. We found zero evidence of these giant ramps. Now, this is where things get wild. In 2024, a team of researchers published a study suggesting something completely different. They believe the Egyptians used a sophisticated system of water shafts and hydraulics. Yes, you heard that right, water power. The theory goes like this. They build a system of shafts and locks inside and around the pyramid, similar to how modern canals work. They'd float the stones on boats through these channels, raising them level by level using the natural flooding of the Nile. The evidence? They found remnants of a tributary channel right next to the Giza Plateau. And recent geological surveys show possible internal shafts that were previously unexplained. This would explain something that's always bothered researchers. How did they get those massive granite blocks from the king's chamber, which are 60 feet up, into position? These blocks weigh up to 80 tons. That's like trying to lift 12 elephants. The water shaft theory actually makes this possible. But wait, there's another theory that's gaining serious traction. French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin spent eight years developing what he calls the internal ramp theory. Using 3D modeling and architectural analysis, he suggests that the Egyptians built a spiraling ramp inside the pyramid itself as they built upward. Here's the genius part. This explains why we never found external ramps. They were built into the structure. In 2017, scientists used cosmic ray imaging technology to scan the Great Pyramid and found a massive hidden void, 100 feet long, right where Houdin predicted an internal ramp would be. Coincidence? Maybe. But it's pretty compelling. Now, some engineers argue we're overcomplicating this. They point to a much simpler explanation, levers and counterweights. Ancient Greek historian Herodotus actually mentioned this when he visited Egypt in 450 BCE. He described the machines made of short wooden planks that lifted stones from one level to the next. Modern experiments have shown that with the right lever system and counterweights, a small team of workers could actually lift multi-ton blocks relatively quickly. A 1997 experiment in Massachusetts successfully moved and raised a two-ton block using only primitive tools and techniques. It was hard work, but totally doable. Here's the truth that nobody wants to admit. We still don't know for sure. And that's okay. What we do know is that the ancient Egyptians were far more sophisticated than we give them credit for. They understood physics, engineering, and logistics at a level that rivals our modern capabilities. Recent excavations have uncovered workers' villages near the pyramids. These weren't slaves, as Hollywood would have you believe. They were skilled laborers who received wages, medical care, and were buried with honor near the monuments they built. Graffiti found inside the pyramid shows work crews had names like Friends of Khufu and competed with each other, suggesting a sense of pride and teamwork. The reality? They'd probably used a combination of all these methods. Ramps for the lower levels, internal spirals for the upper sections, water power where possible, and levers for final positioning. The ancient Egyptians weren't working with one trick. They were master problem solvers who adapted their techniques as they went. And maybe that's the real lesson here. 
We're so focused on finding the one answer that we miss the bigger picture. These weren't people following a single blueprint. They were innovating, experimenting, and pushing the boundaries of what was possible, just like we do today. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the answers to all the questions that are on your mind.